Do you need a weld off of a 240 volt outlet or are 120 volt welders just fine? This is a question that I have had a lot on the channel and um, the truth is the answer is kind of complicated and it depends a lot on the different process that you're running. So we're gonna look at some examples with MIG, TIG, and STICK. Now with any process, you're really limited on your amperage output when you're welding on 120 volts. So we're gonna start looking at MIG welding here and this is some 1 8 inch thick material and generally speaking, 1 8 inch is kind of the crossover point. So I'm using the Revolution 2500, it's a dual voltage machine and I have it plugged in to 120 volts now and I've set it on MIG and it's limiting the uh, maximum output here um, because of the 120 volt input and it's recommending an eighth of an inch. Now I'm welding this coupon together here and as I do that there's really no difference when I'm welding on these 1 8 inch coupons being on 120 volts. And that's really the crossover point where there's no uh, real change. Now when you get thicker than that, not that you can't weld thicker material with 120 volts, but uh, you are going to have to vary your technique a little bit compared to 240 volts where you're going to have more amperage available. And you'll also be limited a little bit on just how much strength you can get even if you run multiple passes. But let's take a look here at this 1 8 inch thick material as kind of a point uh, of which uh, there's really no distinguishable difference. It's a little wobbly there uh, on my bead, but uh, certainly acceptable for most things. Now I'm going to use a fillet weld brake test. And that's where I weld one side and then bend the root open. And you know, this is kind of a garage type variant of it. There's, there's a little more to a, an actual fillet weld brake test. But uh, anyway, here I'm able to bend my material clear over and so this is you know clearly a sound acceptable joint. But let's try some thicker material uh, here, some quarter inch thick material. Now normally when I weld quarter inch thick material I'd be using a larger diameter wire with a lot more amperage. But since I'm limited on the amount of power I can get out of this 120 volt outlet, I'm using the same settings as 1 8 of an inch and just a little bit of weaving uh, or, or kind of some loop-de-loop -loop type manipulation. I don't really like doing this and I can see that it's running in pretty cold. I'll give this another shot in a minute without a camera in the way, um, which will go a little better. But I just want to show you what you can get from this. And so... When I look at the final result, to me it looks pretty cold. Now, there are a lot of products that I dare say have welds that are worse than this that hold up. It's stronger than you'd think, but definitely not up to my standards here. Now, it's holding up pretty well to the, the big hammer, and I'm going to need to move over to the hydraulic press to be able to uh, open this up. Now you can see it's starting to open already. Now on a fillet weld brake test, anything quarter inch thick and over when you just have a single pass like this is gonna break. It's not generally gonna bend over like the eighth inch did. And so that doesn't mean that it fails, but it lets you see inside the joint if there's any discontinuities and if it got into the root. And you can see that for most of the joint, it really didn't get down and consume the root of that joint and it was really just on the face of that mill scale. Now I'm using the same settings here and you might notice there's a push angle instead. That's not really the big difference. The bigger difference is I can see a little better to stay on the leading edge of the puddle and that weld looks a lot better. Once again those same settings I used on that 8 inch thick material but I can tell already how much stronger this is because it's deforming. So with the right technique, notice the edge on that top plate has been consumed all the way along uh, there. So it's not straight anymore. That's kind of one of the big things to look for if you uh, try this test yourself um, to see that you got clear down to the bottom. So I feel really good about this uh, as a single pass, but it is sensitive to the technique. And again, this was over the mill scale. I would remove the mill scale on a product I was welding. However, um, I, I want to look at kind of worst case. So I've plugged this into 240 volts, which lets me crank the wire speed, which also controls your amperage, by the way, uh, on wire feed welding, if you're not familiar with how those work. 
but uh, I'm going to set it at 480 inches per minute, which is going to be somewhere around 150 amps. Um, if I were running 035 wire, which I would on quarter inch generally, then it would be higher, but I don't want to change too many variables at once here. So I'm just running that 030. That's why I'm getting so much spatter on it. It's because I'm really pushing the amperage beyond what that 030 wire should take. So let's break this one open here and take a look and see. Now inside this one, it's very similar to uh, the one that I ran previous to it. Now there's a little bit of delamination on the material, which isn't uh, a problem with the weld, but uh, generally speaking, uh, it, it was a sound weld and it's a lot less sensitive to the technique. I've changed over to stick welding here and I have this set at 95 amps. This machine will run up to 110 amps on 120 volts, which is uh, really on the high end, but 95 is usually a max. And that's enough to run a 3 seconds of an inch 7018. Now, if you can't get that high of an amperage, you can run a 3 seconds of an inch 6013. And the great thing about stick welding is that the uh, thickness of material doesn't play in too much to your amperage. It's mostly the diameter and type of electrode that you're running. So you can weld as thick as you want to with a 3 seconds of an inch 60 uh, or 7018 here and just running multiple passes. So you can see it penetrated in to the root. I wouldn't have minded a little bit more penetration, but it's certainly uh, by most people's standards at an acceptable level. So that is uh, going to be a good option if you want to weld thicker material on 120 volts is to use smaller electrodes with stick. Now let's look at TIG welding and particularly aluminum TIG welding. See on steel and stainless steel with TIG, you can weld most things uh, on 120 volts, but uh, with aluminum, it takes a lot more heat. It's generally more depending on your joint. So here on an outside corner joint on some 1 8 inch thick material, uh, this machine will run up to 150 amps on TIG. And I have the machine maxed out, but I'm only about, uh, you know, two thirds of the way down on the pedal for that outside corner joint. But when I put it in a T-joint configuration like this, it takes a lot more heat. Now, of course, with the camera right there, I'm going to dip my tungsten right off the bat, but we'll just roll with it for the sake of demonstration. Um, it's running a lot slower than I'd need to, and I am at full pedal here. So I really like to have my machine set closer to 170 amps when I'm welding an inside corner or a T-joint like this on uh, aluminum TIG, and I'm limited to 150 here, and some machines would be limited uh, to a lower amount if they didn't have as good of a power factor or efficiency. So this is really um, kind of the limit in my mind, welding 1 8 inch thick material with a 120 volt machine um, on aluminum TIG. I think you could do a little more, especially with some preheat. However, uh, if I was doing more on the regular, I'd want a 240 volt machine. So just to summarize, when you're MIG welding, I think 1 8 of an inch, if you're doing much thicker than that regularly, I'd want a 240 volt machine uh, myself because I think it's just much more robust. But you can get away with a bit thicker if you have good technique. Stick welding, you're going to be limited to small diameter electrodes, but you can really weld as thick as you want with like a 3 seconds of an inch 7018 running multiple passes. Um, but it's going to take you a while on thicker stuff. On TIG, for steel and stainless steel, you're going to be uh, in pretty good shape to run you know, some small beads and multiple passes. But when it comes to aluminum, uh, I, I wouldn't plan on doing a whole lot thicker than 1 8 of an inch with a 120 volt machine. You can get away with a bit if you use some preheat, but I wouldn't do it on the regular. Hey, if you are just getting started with welding or fabrication, I've put together some affordable online courses linked in the description. They've already helped thousands of students to be able to learn faster because I show you the exact fundamentals that you need to focus on with practice exercises at every step of the way. And this keeps you from getting distracted with things that might matter, but might not matter at that point in your learning journey. So check them out, linked in the description, full money back guarantee if they don't work for you. And thanks again for tuning in. We'll see you next time.